All right. I'm going to preface this now because I think I forgot to do it in my initial review. This is definitely a high, high, high should buy. It's almost blew my mind. As a matter of fact, you know what? You can even put it with a blow my mind. It's either a blow my mind or such a high wow you should buy. Like, I actually will watch this movie again. I want to own this movie in my collection. Hardcore action. I could watch this movie. Now, cue the intro. Hmm. All right, let me talk to you today. So, okay, this movie, Extraction, you need to see it, all right? Okay, you need to see it. Now, this is a power-up review. Um, it's very late, but I had to do something, and I need to talk about it. Okay, so... Let's go to my handy dandy little uh, tablet here. So this stars, this is director Sam Hargrave. Uh, this is his directorial debut. Um, he is an actor, an editor, a stunt coordinator, and he has writing credits as well. He's worked on things like Avengers Endgame stuff. Now, writer Joe Russo is a part of this for the screenplay. Uh, Andy Parks, based on a graphic novel, Siwadad, it looks like it's called. Uh, Chris Hemsworth is a producer on it, I know that. So this movie has Chris Hemsworth, uh, Brian LaRome is Rake's son, Ryder LaRome is Rake's son, uh, Ruda Kasha Jeswali, Shivam Vishar, uh, Piyushi, or I'm sorry, Piyush, Kati, Sarer uh, Romeo, and uh, many other people here. And. Wow. Like. Okay. I'm trying to do this. So this is a power review. So I'm going to start with the non-spoilers. They had following shots. Incredible. Like you would see things moving. And they would do it in that gorilla style. But it really worked. Because it felt like you were there. But it didn't feel like it was shaky shaky. But it felt like that gorilla shake. But it wasn't too shaky. It was like enough that that's how they you would be if you were running. That was fantastic. The uh, cinematography was incredible. Uh, it had no holds bar violence. When it did something, it looked real. It's like, wow, I've seen real soldier fights and things. And that's what that looked like. And uh, it... Like I said, it just had this crazy cinematography. Uh, it, it just was... I'm trying, to, I'm trying not to spoil this. Uh, the way the fights were going. The score was good. Beautiful visuals. The, the way... There was even shots where it would be like this. And then the shot would transition. And it's like, how did you transition that shot? So like it could be like here. Like let's say you're outside the window or something, right? And then it goes like this. But it just keeps going, even though the window's still here. It, it, it was insane. I, I Like, it, it was great. The score, every piece of music worked. Uh, the cultural mixes were good. It had that... If you ever watched a Bollywood action movie, it had some of that feel to it. The way it moved. Um, the movie also had just this flair about it. And the story was simple... But it was deep at the same time. And I don't mind a simple story. To be honest with you, sometimes I think people want too much from an action movie. I think sometimes, a lot of times with action movies, the best kind of stories are simple. John Wick, revenge story. Rambo, disrespecting, prejudice. Second Rambo, POW, third Rambo, Lost Warrior. Four. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's still very... And you build around that. And Commando, you took his daughter, kind of thing. <laughs> but... Chris Hensworth, uh, he definitely showed showed range in this. He definitely, um, he wasn't one note. He had these good moments. He had certain comedy moments, but they weren't over the top. They were very straightforward. He had, um, he felt like a soldier. And I remember he did that other movie where they were on the horses and stuff. And he felt like a soldier there, but this one, he felt like he fit the mercenary thing. And they gave him something so that you could see that there was a softer side to him and a a kind of lost about him, like a lostness about him where he's kind of existing. 
And there's moments in it where you really get it. Um, the stunts are extremely crisp, uh, very stylistic. And I think because the director is a, as a, a stunt coordinator and he does cinematography, like I think he took all of it into one. And I'm noticing these action movies are done really well by these people, these directors who are these stunt guys, like the guys who did John Wick. Stunt guys. Like, it's like they know how to get these shots. And if you give them enough, they really deliver, man. Also, too, um, the location. So, like, for example, when they're in Australia, it looks a certain way. The sky looks a certain way. Everything looks a certain color. But then when they're in India, it's like this orange kind of sunlight hue. And it made it feel different. But then when they were at the bridge, it was different. It, it, it That color palette really set the mood. For the things and, and it made you feel like a different world without being too jarring and it was gritty uh the gun work the the caps they they had this uh chase scene that was like a one shot scene and they would do these one shots but then it would like cut the right way uh things would pop up on you just like if you were standing there if you're playing call of duty or halo or something and let's say you're around a corner someone pops on you it's like that you would see a lot of those and it was really surprising and very brutal and shocking and honest and it was nice because you don't really get to see that normally you're like i know that's coming no there would be things happening somebody could be walking and doing something and all of a sudden pow you see them get popped it, it was crazy um like i said multi-layered characters the story is very simplistic one two three but it did have layers to it that really worked uh for people's motivations and it just did all that with the color grade. Now, I want to get into the spoiler section. I don't even know how long this review is going to be. So, uh, now I've been powering up. Now the review, now I'm powered up. You get your spoiler in three, two, one. So, first of all, when they do this scene, you'll know the car chase. It's like they follow the thing in and it just goes into the car. And it's like a non-stop motion. The movie kind of reminds me also of so many of these good movies. Like Fury Road, where it, once it became a car chase, that's what it was. It was like the chase where, but it had a little downtime. But even in the downtime, things happened. David Harbour was great. Also, one of the things I loved that I didn't want to spoil because it, I just felt like it would be spoilerish. Chris Hemsworth's character, Tyler, was not un, unstoppable. He was a, definitely a special forces kind of guy. He was very good at his job, but he was not unstoppable. Um, actually, David Harbour almost took him out. Like, he... Because... Even though David was older than him and they were playing that up, the guy definitely had skill. Um, the the villain was interesting because he was kind of like a, a, the big time drug lord like uh, Pablo Escobar, but of India and the other drug lord. And then you had the other guy who was really good. That was the kid's guardian and they were fighting. And I love that because they like knocked each other out the window and they kind of were on top of each other because he started taking people out. And it was because he couldn't pay and he had to do something grimy. But then they would hit and then you would see them like sometimes they fight and then all of a sudden, you, you know, you see the hero, he, Chris, Chris will mule kick him and like, yeah. And he turns and then he's up and he's in a car and he's just getting hit and flipped over. And one of the great things to do is walk over but all of a sudden he just, he's like, something's wrong. And the guy's like, yeah, you know, and he's talking to him all of a sudden, bam, and boom, and he just gets knocked into the truck. He's like, Ugh. I was like, oh, it just hit you. I was like, oh, shoot. And he's like, get in the car. He's like, what just happened? I don't know. And the 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 freaking, I got some notes here. What, what else? Oh, the motives of the drug lord versus drug lord was cool where the guy was like, look, I'll kill your family and make sure your son doesn't do it if you don't save mine kind of thing. And the kid's just innocent in this, but then you had the other guy who still wanted to save the kids, so they had the same goal, but they had to get to that goal. And one of my favorite things I've ever seen in a movie, because I think it's one of the most BA things you could ever do, when you see his nose is broken, he's really beat up and his arm is mangled, so they're like, they actually take time in the movie for like hours to recover. And you see him just crack his nose and then the blood spatter. I always think that's just so cool because that's just hardcore. You're like, you know what? I ain't breathing right. Snap. And I'm like, ooh, I don't even know. That. That'd be rough to do. Um, and you see them like rest. And it was like the kids in there was funny. And Chris, like, him words, like one kid looked. He's like, get the heck out of here. And he wouldn't hurt the kids. But the kids kept like trying to kill him. And like, he smacked up. And then it was funny too because he started just, he's like, Smacking him up. The one kid threw. He's like, get out of here. And launched him over a, a motorcycle. And then threw the other one. And then freaking. Then he started actually giving the kids the business. But he was hurting them. But not, you know, killing them. So, like, the one kid, he catches him. Flip, you know, because he's got his thing. Puts it. Smashes his, head, his arm in the door. And then knocks him out. Then the other dude, he smashes his head against the windshield. It, it was freaking cool. Um, 
What else do I got here? Uh, yeah. Oh, one of my favorite things, and it happened like this. So he's beating these dudes up. He picks up one and smacks this whole body into another guy, and you see it, and he literally breaks the dude's neck because he literally just takes him and throws his whole body like a weapon and then slams the guy. When they first go into the room, for example, like, he lights it up because he has no fear. He's like, you don't have a clip. Because he's trying to tell him that's how good I am. And when he's lighting him up and he comes in a room and he's using the weapons. And then the one dude, he like pushes his face on a rake. And the, it, it's and the reason why I'm talking so much about the violence because when people get hit, it wasn't like, yeah, I'm fucked. It was pop out. And it would drop. And that's how it really would look. Like they would hit the splatter and it would just surprise them because they'd be like, we're moving, we're moving. Bam. And when you would see him fight, one of the great things, and, and this is a testament. First off, this is Sam Hargrove's first directorial debut. This is some of the best camera work and, and stuff I've seen in a while. This guy turned around, like you would see him fight, right? And he would take his gun. And it was like, it reminded me of like the Bourne series. but Because sometimes he would pick up something and smack you with it. But he would do things just to get to deal with you. And he would drop you to try to fight the next time you got up. He would drop on you. But he would always try to incapacitate you fully. Well, one of the cool things, like when he took his handgun, you see him pop, 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 pop. And you see him grab the one dude, make him shoot him, pop him. But then he realized he's out of bullets. And he would smack him and kill him with the, the gun. And he would like hit him, hit him, hit him. And then like with his, uh, with his one piece, uh, like the AK, he would hit, hit. And he would do the turns. But then he would like hit to disarm. Which is something that the military are learned to do. They have a style a lot of military does where it's like, pow, 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 and it's to get the gun back on you. And that's what he would do. He would hit, hit, and it was so believable. And he would shoot people in specific places. Like the one dude, he kept, he shot him in both his thighs and then hit the guy. And he would like throw things, but he would take shots too. And he's like, Ugh. and you would see it. And like he would have to catch the gun and he was like, oh shoot. Cause the dude would try to shoot him and he would, he took a hit, but he would like try to dip it and make, and like, really get into the person and he would and he would cap he would do it fast he would dispatch them quickly and i love that and the knife fights where he would go and him and the dude had it and they were slashing the guy's like dang he slashed me and he was slashed up where his arm actually was cut uh pretty viciously like around here and up here and what was also good you see them when he, he when he would quietly take somebody like one dude he literally pressured his throat and to do a silent kill and there was like this other word like where he cut the dude slit his throat but he cut up down like he made sure he went through like that so the guy wouldn't make a noise you would see him like sometimes the kid would run or something would happen and all of a sudden a person would run out he'd pop him he would just show up and boom. It, it was really good if you are an action junkie you would like this but it had some levity to it too like rambo 5 had a lot one day i'm going to go through the rambo series as i keep doing this channel um and I know I, I'm just rambling, but it's really that good. Like, And I'm still not even talking about all the violence. I'm just telling you about some of the stuff that stood out to me. It, But the violence was always necessary, always crisp, and always pristine. You believed Chris Hemsworth. And they gave him a thing with his son. So you saw that he cared and why he kind of was like, a, I'll do it. You know, whatever. Um, the way his person that works with him, you saw she cared about him. He cared about his team, but it was like not deep because it was focused on him. Um, another thing too, I, okay, so a long time ago, um, it was actually on my Facebook, um, I have to find my Stan Lee one, I, I ended up getting a virus thing, so it might be locked behind that from like a while ago, I'm hoping one day I'll get it unlocked as a crypto thing, um, so that that way I can get it, because I think that's where the picture, my picture with Stan Lee is, I still have the book though, um, but I met Chris Hemsworth and he was nothing but sweet, kind and everything. It was years ago. Uh, it was before the first Thor movie came out years ago. And he was so cordial, so sweet, so kind. I always wish the best for this guy. And I always get upset that he couldn't find that thing to get him to that next level outside of Thor. And I didn't think it was fair because he's so talented. He's so funny, charismatic. He can be the action guy, but he can also be the funny guy. He can be which you need him to be. He, in this movie, he really showed range. And I love the fact that him and the kid had a connection that he wasn't intending to have. And he actually opened up to the kid about what was going on with his son and how he was like, I'm not brave, I'm actually a coward. And that was so cool. And the kid like taught him stuff and he started to care. And he was like, no, this kid's going to be saved. Um, when you see him fighting, he's getting torn up, but he's handling stuff. And he's handling, even the other guy, the Guardian, even though he ended up getting killed, he tore up.
And when he finally got killed, he was like, yeah, when he got killed, it was because someone had to snipe him. It was like they could not just stop these guys. But it was because they were this good. This is what they do kind of thing. And I love the, um, his handler, how she like popped people and she did her thing too. And, and she ended up getting revenge in the end for killing him because you could tell she, they had a relationship. And um, even when he got shot, when I started noticing he was moving and smiling, I'm like, okay, he might have hit it, but he didn't hit. He took it. Like where he got hit, he's not bleeding out profusely. He could survive, but I was like, maybe he did die. When the guy looked, he saw there was no body there. To me, that told him he was alive. Now I'm going to the ending where the kid kind of feels when he looks and you see a, a, a person there. That Chris Hemsworth and how I know because they said that this movie did so well to doing a second movie. Don't believe the outlets. They're like, oh, it's too violent in this. No, it needs to be that violent because it was a violent situation. He's a mer he's a former, I think it was like Australia's uh, Air Force person or Force person. And he has to go into a war zone that's already ridiculous. And this dude runs the city. So it was already crazy. That's why when she got him, I was like, yo, that's nuts. Because this dude runs the city, but she caught him at the most vulnerable time. Uh, the action was good. There was deepness to it. There was uh, caring. It was gritty. It was unapologetic. Uh, uh, it, it, it was nasty. It, it was rough. It was hard to watch uh, in a good way. Like, it's like, oh, man, he's really going through it kind of thing. I never have a problem watching this stuff. I love it. But if you are an action movie person, if you like John Wick or you like these things or you like Rambo, it felt like the perfect combination of that or like we're born. Check out this movie. Um, this movie, I, I give a shit by. Um, I don't know if I said that earlier. I hope I did. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, you know what? I know I didn't. So I'll preface this video with a video before and then I'll get to the opening. That way you know. Um, but yeah, it, it, Chris Hemsworth killed it. I want to see more of this character. I think he found something here. I think this might be that thing that could get him going into the stardom like how Chris Pratt got. Um, I feel bad for Men in Black International. Um, I didn't hate that movie. I actually want to review it one day. Uh, I'm going to pick times where I'm going to be like, okay, time to review this series. And then I'm going to do it like how I'm doing Star Wars. Which more Star Wars is coming because now half the month's over. So I have to start dropping and I need to record some more. So um, I got these comics I'm going to be doing too. So I'm going to be trying to take a time out. Like maybe on uh, Sunday because I got a lot to do this weekend and do some stuff. But I, I definitely want to get through my Star Wars. I want to have them already queued up so I can just drop them. Because now I'm going to start rapid firing because we're pretty much halfway into the month. So yeah, if you saw the movie, tell me what you think. If you didn't, I highly suggest it. It is definitely a should buy. Um, sorry I ran along, but yo, stay safe, stay healthy. This is the Geek Protagonist. Not today. And I'm out. See ya. Hey, thank you for visiting my channel. This is the Geek Protagonist. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Uh, please, it'll really help me out in the channel if you actually share these videos, if you like what I'm doing. Um, please hit that bell notification. Hit it click, click. Uh, this way you won't miss any of my videos. Also, there's a thing on there that says personal and all. Hit the all. Uh, this way you'll get them every time for the notifications. I'm trying to, you know, grow, trying to do commentary about what's going on. Um, and I want to thank you again. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay real. This is the Geek Protagonist. I'm out and I'll see you.